Hi guys, just want to show you uh, what I've been able to achieve with the airbrush. Um, I had some pitfalls with the airbrush and, and that's not because of the airbrush itself. Um, it's um, because of um, me being new to the uh, airbrush. Um, at one stage I clogged the airbrush up, not seeing my game colour down enough. Um, so that took me a good 15-20 minutes to uh, clean the airbrush out there and uh, uh, another time I uh, was spraying the uh, paint too thin and I was splattering it around and uh, got uh, some even effects in, in places but um, on the whole uh, as soon as I, you know as soon as I'd done the initial airbrushing left it for a few hours and then went back to it um, everything started to run smoothly I started to get to grips with the distance that you need to spray at um, PSI control for different types of jobs um, if you're laying down a whole base coat for example you'll be spraying a little further away and you'll be um, spraying at a slightly higher PSI uh, but then if you want to start shading in the panel lines or doing this mud effect that you see down here this was done with game colors earth color um i dropped the psi's down to i think about 15 or 20 psi and um i want to spray a little bit closer and a nice even slow um um, paint going across so as soon as I got to grips with that I started to enjoy it for the first couple of hours oh my god I was like no Les and Marnius make it look so easy but uh, yeah no it's just a case of getting to grips with that so don't rush like I did I only had about a minute or two practice on paper spend at least an hour or two in my opinion mucking about on some scrap paper or a really crappy old broken model that you just don't care for um, because on, on, on this model uh, I've got a few drip marks now because I weather my tanks anyway I can hide them um, but uh, yeah um, I did the drip marks were from the initial sprain when I first started but towards the uh, the latter part of the um, the uh, painting process uh, the, the brushing went absolutely perfect um, a few things to touch up back plate there and uh, some of the stuff probably like I've spotted a place there that needs uh, chipping up it's just a big black patch which means nothing on its own uh, the decals if I can zoom in on those um, there's three there they're all stacked on top of each other and uh, I think that's turned out quite well because um, I'm not a big fan of just one big plain uh, U ultramarine symbol um, it takes away from the detail of the model um, but if you actually stack more detail on top of it um, it makes the um, miniature look that much more realistic if you ask me um, pigments were used on the wheels and the bottom and they were sealed with a mix of matte varnish and a bit of gloss varnish um, so there was it was packed in uh, and as you can see it's quite thick I might put some more on actually depends but uh, yeah and you can see on the front uh, there as well and uh, just to show you just using matte varnish and this has only been settled for about an hour now using matte varnish and a little bit of gloss none of that's come off on my finger that's just blue paint that's been there for a, a while but yeah the, it, it uh, sits down on the model quite well and uh, it's fairly cheap actually the uh, gloss varnish I think uh, Vallejo, uh, Vallejo and the matte varnish it's about 225 for 60 mil um, so it, that does work I mean there's other methods out there but uh, for me that, that has been working there might be other better things out there but yeah right uh, that's it um, thanks for watching and uh, I'd just like to uh, uh, say thanks to uh, the tips that was given me from uh, Marnius <laughs> classic story uh, he said uh, when you think you've thinned your uh, paints enough thin them some more uh, unfortunately I didn't listen to that <laughs> advice yesterday but uh, yeah definitely uh, definitely took that into consideration today okay uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next one